Everybody knows Richard and Carol Falato in their hometown of York Hill. How can you not know the famous band director and the charming and charismatic big band MC and his wife Carol? You will not believe that Richard just had his 85th birthday and that Carol is 84. The way they look and live will make you jealous. But please, don't get jealous. Learn from them and implement their secrets into your life. Let's go! How did you know that you were created for each other? That this understanding came immediately or it grew over the years? Well, I would say, Ailita, that it grew over the years. Number one, you know, you start out and when you first meet, like I'm sure our romance and same with many other people, it's all chemistry. And then after chemistry, it starts to become a physical attraction. And then I think after our physical attraction, it became a little deeper and we started creating a relationship. And then as we created this relationship, we became comfortable with it. And to this day, we are still comfortable with it because it is true love. And true love is really sharing and um, being selfless and seeing that the other person is happy. And I think that is the secret to our marriage and to probably all marriages. How long <laughs> it took for you to create a great relationship that you have? When we first met each other, we actually dated for seven or eight years wow. before we actually were married. So we had a long courtship and we knew each other quite well before uh, you know we were married. And uh, we were having an ice cream cone when Rick proposed to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Three years ago? Yeah. Seven years. What's yeah. it now? Yeah, like three, five months. Please tell us how, who was your influencer in your decision to pursue an entertainment industry? Well, it started actually back in about 1946. That's a long time ago. And it was, um, I belong to uh, Boy Scouts, and our scoutmaster, his name was Glenn Smith, he took us down to, in, to the gym at, in the church, and there were bugles and drums lined up, and he said, okay, you're gonna play bugle, you're gonna play drums, and like that. And we became the Le Mans Boy Scout Troop 383, Drum and Bugle Corps. And then as we got older, we became the Austin Grenadiers Drum and Bugle Corps and continued traveling. Then when I reached high school and started taking trumpet lessons. Did your parents, uh, did they support you playing a trumpet? Oh yes, oh yes, right. Yeah, they were behind us. In fact, when I reached high school, I took up the trumpet and um, eventually became uh, the first trumpet player in the band. Do you have concerns about how you're going to make a living as a trumpet player? Well, at that time you could make a living as a trumpet player, as a musician, because there were wedding, there was, everything was live. The weddings, they had live music, um, most of your clubs, live music. When I was a senior in high school, um, I was awarded a scholarship to Cole College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and played the trumpet there. I gave up that scholarship and went to um, to Vandercook because it was a bandmaster's college, and I wanted to be a bandmaster rather than a professional trumpet player. So then um, I went there for four years, and um, my first teaching job was Cole City High School, not too far from Yorkville. And then I was drafted and I went in the Army Band Headquarters 
headquarters band for two years in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. I, so anyhow. Look at each other, Atlanta, yeah, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Something about that. Yeah, I, I came back with a southern accent, y'all. Oh. Yeah, I did. Yeah, on the weekends, I worked for my older brother who had, who started in his base in the basement as uh, developing film and black and white. And he would go to the church and take pictures and uh, send the photographs, three and a half by five black and white photographs to them. And then uh, the, it started growing and growing. And um, at one time he had the largest studio in Chicago and he had something like 35 photographers working for him. And, and then on the weekends, I, I would be um, photographing weddings and every wedding had a band. And that's not the way it is now. Every wedding has a DJ, you know. So all these professional people had a very difficult time because all that uh, faded out of the yeah. uh, sight. How did you achieve uh, this journey, successful journey of managing the royal day? Mayor Carol? Carol? Carol, okay. Okay, go ahead. All yes, right. Then. Well, it started out um, when Rick and I got together. He said, let's go to a Memorial Day service here in Yorkville. I said, okay. So we went. And yep. he was just amazed that there were only six or eight, a handful, in other words, of people there. Just a few. And most of them were my nurse friends. And he said, you know, this needs to change. We, we need, this needs to improve. So he went to the Legion and... Um, he just, he was used to being in charge of things, and he went to the Legion and said, you know, could I be in charge of the Memorial Day service? And they said, sure, you know, they're glad, people are glad if people want to take things over. So they said, sure, go ahead. So he started out and um, started organizing, and I think it grew just in great numbers because Rick, he, uh, encourage the middle school band to come so they the middle school band was there sometimes you know 100 to 150 young people in that band and then we had the Boy Scouts and of course when you have children they bring their family so yeah. that increased the numbers and then we also uh, invited the Heinz veterans from Heinz Hospital and that also helped to increase the numbers so you know, it just it just grew and grew and grew mm -hmm. over the years, and it was very very heartwarming to see it grow. Rick yeah. did all the organizing and putting it all together. He would start in February, maybe thinking about who he should have for the Memorial Day keynote speaker, and um, all I did was present it. And it was not easy because you had you both of you had to manage. Uh, multiple things, what yes. is asking. Whatever Richard yeah. and Carol touch, it blossoms. Yeah. <laughs> when I got out of the Army, then I worked for a music store for, because I got out in the middle of September, I couldn't find a teaching job. Uh, so I taught in South Holland and Midlothian, Illinois for two or three years. And then I got the full-time teaching job in Keegan, Illinois. And uh, I went to the principal. I had just been out of the Army a couple of years, and I had the band program in Waukegan, and Memorial Day was coming, and these kids didn't know anything about Memorial Day. So I went to my principal and I asked, could I start a Memorial Day service and uh, for the kids and let them know what it's all about? And he said, sure, go right ahead. So Waukegan is not too far from Great Lakes, and I called them and invited the colored guy, the rifle squad, and I had a guest speaker, and my band played, and all the kids came out of school to hear it. So that's how I got my start with Memorial Day. And then when Carol took me to Memorial Day service and what, eight people, well, that was pretty bad. So a couple years we had Chuck and uh, Lydia Roberts, and they brought in their tanks and Jeeps, and all military equipment. Tanks, imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the road instead of cars, right. tanks. Uh -huh. And then we invited uh, the Heinz Hospital uh, to come out. There was a bus load and mm -hmm. the Legion had a lunch for them after 
the Memorial Day service. So it's a big thing now where we have, yes. you know, 500 people that show up at, at Memorial Day. And Carol was just an, an excellent job as MC. Yes. You know, she was great up there. You yeah. give her a microphone and she just doesn't stop talking, you know. She's... <laughs> I know both of you are like to joke and take the different life situation and things in a humorous way. Yes. Like right now. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please tell me how humor, good humor, and jokes and positive attitude help you to be happy and stay calm content in this life? Well, who, who's going to take the question? Go ahead, Carol. You go, <laughs> you go well, well, I could put it very briefly in just saying I think laughter is the best medicine. And, uh, you know, if you can laugh at yourself and if you can laugh together at each other, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, that makes things light of things and uh, helps maybe a heavy yeah. situation become a lot lighter. Carol says I'm the king of BS. <laughs> I know what that means. Yeah. Right. You know, we've been together how many years now, Carol? Well, we've been 20. married 21, but 21. we have been together since 1989. Yeah. I feel that I'm very, very lucky. Oh, yes. You know, because I have two loves in my life. <laughs> they, they both, they both I would see. So I'm gonna put Carol first, and then Casey. Oh, yes. Okay, my dog Casey. Casey, but and Carol what does come first. Does that come in? Yeah, I've only Carol and I have only had like two arguments in our whole lifetime together. Yeah, but with Casey, no arguments at all. Yeah. Oh, you know. right. <laughs> she doesn't say much. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. She's very quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nonverbal. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get a famous trumpet player to play with your orchestra? He was considered the world's greatest trumpet player back in the 40s and 50s. Let's go back a few more years when I was in college and I went to Vander Cook College, Bandmasters College in Chicago. Every year, uh, Vander Cook started the Bandmasters Convention and it's held at one of the uh, hotels downtown Chicago, Hilton Hotel, one of the big hotels. They would have hundreds and hundreds, thousands of band directors from all over the country that would go to the convention and they would invite bands to play there. And then they would have clinics and uh, they invited Rafael Mendez to play with, uh, with the band. And he has twin sons um, and bo he taught both of them to play the trumpet. So they did trumpet trios at the convention. That's the first time I heard him. Then years later, when I became a band director and I was teaching in Mount Prospect, Illinois, Dempster Junior High School, where I taught for 38 years, I had um, 350 kids in the band program there, out of 1,200 that were in the entire school, entire school. And um, after school, I had uh, private teachers come in on clarinet and flute and trumpet and my trumpet player who came in and taught privately um, was connected with a, a company in Wisconsin that made the trumpets and made Mendez's trumpet and he was the one that was able to get Mendez to come in from California where he lived and he had also a TV show in California and he came in and it was the first time he's ever played with a junior high school band. He invited him back the second year so he came two years in a row and he did he played with my concert band and then my jazz band and then uh, he did a trumpet trio 
and I had two kids on second trumpet, two on third, and then Des on lead trumpet, and they did a trumpet trio. I still hear from one of those trumpet players, she's a woman that uh, played with Mendez and is now a professor of trumpet in Florida University, okay? And that's how I, I was able to get Mendez to come down uh, because he was here too with his instrument company. He went to and then he played with my band. But that was the first time he's ever played with a junior high school that's band. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. We have Christian to Carol. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sir Carol, please tell us about your new position. You're a creative director of Richard. Especially senior citizens, how Carol creates, where she finds the, those events, how she is scheduling, and how you can learn from Carol and Richard. The main thing is, as you say, senior citizens tend to have some medical issues. And so I think you have to schedule what you do within your limitations. And during the years of the senior years, you, those limitations change. So I think you have to change your activities according to your limitations. But we have managed to find many, many activities in spite of some medical issues and, li and our limitations. Um, to name a few. <laughs> yes. I will name a few. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. 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 So just for myself, um, I I am in the Red Hat group. I'm in a book club group. Um, both of us do things with our church, and we are involved in the worship group with our church, and. Um, then together we just enjoy doing all kinds of community things we do we attend our homeowners association meeting um we feel that the library offers a lot of programs oh, yes. and things that yeah. you can uh, you can tune into those and uh, we've enjoyed some of those also wamansi college the junior college has some programs and classes that they really, they are for seniors and maybe not even seniors. I know Rick has taken some classes there. He's uh, been to the band there. And I have taken a music class and an art class and also an opera class. And Rick has, uh, he's attended some of the operas with me yes. and uh, enjoyed that a lot. To me, there are more things to do than you have time to do them, uh, you know, and we try and go to as many community events as we can. Not only community, but there are things in our local area that are maybe even outside of our city, outside of our county, that um, are very enjoyable to go to too. Now, I try to keep track of all of this by keeping a calendar. calendar. <laughs> yes. So, you I, writing down or you have an app or how do you? Well, I, I, I put it actually on my calendar that's inside my cupboard door and then I have another one <laughs> where I, I can write more detail down. Like if I need to, you know, keep an, some notes on time or addresses or something, then that's the one that I go to. So I actually kind of have two calendars. I don't use my phone for that, but I do use my phone to find many of these events. I have, it's called Eventful and I eventful have up. yes oh, so and up called eventful so yes get it to your phone and you will be able to find events that is in your community there's there's the phone there's the papers there's TV there's radio um, a lot of times they have people speaking of events we try to go to things like the fair I like craft shows and and then I also I like to go out to, we like to go out to dinner with our friends we do that a lot and parties at our friends houses maybe and I like to go out to lunch with my friends and my family just this summer we have we have four great grandchildren but now we have two new ones that were both born 10 days apart in yeah. June wow. so you know uh, they change so fast now you need to see them often Usually, as soon as I hear of something, it goes on the calendar. And then there are certain things. Actually, at the beginning of the year, 
I take down my old calendar and there are certain events and birthdays and so forth that I know that are going to be coming up every year. So I, and then I also, as the year goes on, um, things that are going to be happening next year, I add on. So I get my new calendar and I copy from my old calendar the things that I know are going to happen. And then all the new things, they just fill in almost every day. <laughs> Question to Richard. Yes. <laughs> Please tell us your most memorable gigs that you had with your big band. With the Yorkville Big Band, one of the best gigs that we've ever had was um, the Paramount Theater in Aurora. And what happened there was, I think it was the Navy Band from Washington was scheduled to perform at the Paramount Theater. It was the year after uh, the bombing that took place in New York. and. Um, they canceled out. Well, in the newspapers, with a whole full page of of the the event and the Navy band or Air Force band, whatever it was, from Washington. And the week before the concert, they backed out. And the, um, the senator from Illinois, who lived in Yorkville, called me and asked if we if I could have the. Yorkville Big Band performed there. So we performed there and um, uh, the first time we did, we had Gloria Van, who was my vocals at the time, and she sang with the band. I have to go back a little bit. When I was teaching in um, Mount Prospect, uh, they closed my junior high and then I was transferred to uh, Elk Grove and I taught band in Elk Grove, which is the same school district. There were five junior high schools and many grade schools. So when I was teaching in Elk Grove Village, um, the park district, Elk Grove Park District, asked me to form a concert band. So I, I started a concert band there and it uh, just never took off. There weren't that many involved in it. So I asked the park district if I could start a, a big band. And they said, go ahead, and big band. So we had the Elk Grove Park District big band. And I had played a gig with Gloria Van. Gloria Van sang with all the big bands back in the 40s, Gene Krupa and all the big bands and Wayne King. And her husband uh, played with Glenn Miller overseas band. And he was the last person to see Glenn Miller alive. He drove Glenn Miller to the airport, an airplane that never came back. When I started that band, um, Itasca Country Club called me and said, could you guys play a, a gig in, at the Itasca Country Club just one Sunday? And because they knew Gloria Van. And I said, sure. We and Carol, and we were going together at the time, and and I asked her to be the MC, and she did all the announcing, and uh, Gloria Van sang. From the first dance, they had 80 people, and from the the one dance there, they asked us to continue. We went for four or five years, and it went to 350, 400 people to dance. Tell me how Carol started Personal. to see it again. Tell, tell the story. Oh. That's a fun story. I think it was um, one of our first gigs, and it was in Plano, mm -hmm. Illinois. And I was on the stage directing the band, and Carol was in the audience. And I saw Carol sitting there, and I said, Carol, come on up here. So she came up here, and I said, say a few words, you know. <laughs> a few words. Well, a few <laughs> words. She hasn't <laughs> stopped talking <laughs> since. <laughs> You know, God, I never, she never stops. I never stopped and, talking before yeah. that. <laughs> right, and she has that gift. You know, the thing yes. is, I was raised in Chicago. I'm a city slicker, and I married a farmer's daughter. And Carol was also a nurse, you know. You have to give her credit for that. That's why I have my I private, I have a private nurse. Yes. 
That takes him. That's why I'm, I'm so such a handsome-looking guy, right, Carol? Well, I don't groom you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You want to pay, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm built like a yeah. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Atlas no. himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. I had the honor of going to Bridger, South Dakota, back in 2014. And we were there for a whole week. Um, our church went to an Indian reservation. What I did there was uh, to teach the um, Indian children the recorder, uh, this little plastic instrument that um, this particular one is uh, a Yamaha German fingering, which is the same fingering as the clarinet, flute, and saxophone. So after playing this and learning maybe 50, 60 songs on it, they're ready to go into uh, the uh, regular band instruments. Then also what I did at uh, the, the whole week was to uh, videotape the um, whole thing. And it was really quite interesting to see the young people, high school kids digging trenches that were about of five feet deep all the way around the building and adding electricity to the building. It was quite a, a privilege to, to go there and teach the recorder to the Indian children. A B, one finger. A, two fingers. And G, three fingers. You played your first song. Bravo, bravo. Recently, I just found out that I have 23 kids that I started in fifth grade on band instruments that are band directors around the country. So That's, amazing. So yeah. you started up careers of uh, many talented children. It was a quite, and I still love teaching. In fact, um, um, I was doing some teaching of uh, the young kids and um, the recorder. This is a recorder. Okay, then you make a little adjustment to get that the holes in the right place. With the German fingering, it's the same fingering as the clarinet, flute, and saxophone, where the broke it isn't. And so when they get into fifth grade, then I'll start them on band instruments, and they already know the fingerings to the clarinet, flute, and saxophone, and they can probably play maybe about a uh, hundred songs by that time. And then that leads into uh, band instruments. You so, taught them, you influenced them, you encouraged them, you inspired yeah. them. And I'm sure they're so thankful to you right uh, now and appreciate what you have done for them. In a few more weeks, I have a big one coming up, birthday. I will be 85 years old. Oh no, you're yep. joking. Yep, 85. Carol and I right now are the same age. She, I know she doesn't look 84, but no, you, don't you know. That but I also don't believe that look how yeah. great they're looking. And Carol just a movie yeah. star, beautiful blue outfit. Oh, and please share your secret of staying beautiful and in style. Please share with ladies because I'm sure they're just uh, so anxious to know about that. <laughs> what do you do? Tell what do what I you. do? Well, I spend a lot of time and money. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. Save your money. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I think it kind of started back with my mom. Um, my mom was the one, and you know, I feel, as you said, God gave us this body. Our body is our temple. And I feel that we need to take care of it. And um, it's not just being beautiful, but it's taking care of what God gave you. And I think, you know, a lot of it is um, paying attention and moisturizing your skin and hydrating and drinking a lot of water oh, and oh, water yeah. and good <laughs> good things yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Lots of good water and uh, you know, yeah. every time we go out, <laughs> honest this is the truth. There must be at least four or five <laughs> people that will say, Oh, what a beautiful outfit that oh your hair is so gorgeous. <laughs> it's not only about me, it's about her, you know. Yes. You know, yes. God. And then, you know, on Monday nights we go to the American Legion here in New York where, I, where I'm a member and we get we get a hamburger and what have you. And there's the four guys that come up to her and kiss her on the lips. You know, they oh. just oh God. Those <laughs> lips, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, I but I know I don't. They're, they're bigger. They're bigger than I am. You know. You know so I, you know. Actually, Bless. some of them were um, on our wounded. We we were part of a wounded oh, warrior that's group. Right. And I part, about that. and we got. I got to know these guys, yeah. and they became buddies and friends because we yeah. all were part of the wounded warrior group yeah. and put on you know a benefit for that too. Actually. And, uh, you know, then we had a big party at the end, and we just, we grew to be yeah. friends through that. Oh, yeah, I forgot about, about that. That's very important. I really felt bad when I was watching TV and the Wounded Warriors came on. So I went to a Legion meeting, and I said, I would like my band to, to have a fundraiser for, for the Wounded Warriors in our area. And the commander... Conrady, uh, Jim Conrady, Conrady said, Conrady. Rick, we'll give you the hall and anything else you need. So they, um, they had all kinds of different activities going that day. My band played and we raised $30,000 for the Wounded Warriors. Locally. Yeah, locally. So the second, oh, by the way, then we were turning down people left and right. Because you know you get, you can just hold so many in the hall, so we decided that we're going to do it again, and this time we took it to Timber Creek Convention Center in Sandwich, Illinois, and there was we sold out completely there too. Mm, so I think they raised close really to fifty thousand dollars in there. Powerful. What is your message? To the audience. Well, I think the main thing is to stay involved and to stay active as much as you can. And I realize that isn't for some people. Some people just aren't socially adept and they don't enjoy that kind of thing. So maybe um, if that isn't your thing, maybe then that type of person could maybe think about some hobbies and uh, you know there are Michaels and some of these stores give classes on crafts and hobbies and you know maybe some people could get into that if they don't like being involved in all the social stuff and you know it's to me and it's kind of hard to identify a senior citizen these days just not really looking at people but it's in some circles they say 50 years old plus is a senior citizen. Other places they say 65 years old plus is a senior citizen. And to me, being a senior citizen at 50 is much different than being a senior oh, yes. citizen in your 80s. 80s. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes your, um, your life expectancy yeah. is different and your, I think, uh, your goals in life change. And you know, right? That's why I'm, I'm right. so happy that Carol and I did a lot of traveling when we were younger, mm -hmm. and um, oh, went to Europe, and mm -hmm. uh, I climbed the Great Wall of China. Oh wow! About two steps. How long it took for you? Yeah, Carol went. <laughs> Carol went up. <laughs> when I was with another guy, and he was having problems, heart problems. So I only <laughs> did two steps with him. We went to Iceland. And we went to Ireland also and yeah. England and then we took um, some cruises where we went oh, to yeah, Russia and right. and right. Latvia and Estonia yeah. and Finland and Belgium yeah. Yeah. and Norway and Sweden and um, yeah. then we went to Spain Italy. and Portugal and Italy and yeah. Germany and Austria and Bavaria. We and did all this when we were younger, you know. Now it's a little <laughs> difficult because, <laughs> yeah. you know. This is amazing because you 
cherish with you all yes. these great memories. Right. Memories, and right. It's so good. You feel so good that you did it. Yes, and it's right. With you stays with you. Please, Karen, Richard. Yes. Uh, address your question to the audience. Okay. What do you do for fun? Uh, write down your answer in the comments below. We would like to know. And the best answer will get a prize. Ooh. Richard, what question do you want to ask the audience? Well, I just hope that they pursue something that they love. Go for it, no matter if it's how hard it is. That's what I try to do. And fortunately, um, it worked out for me because I yes. found this beautiful yes. woman, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that keeps me medicated <laughs> and I like to be pursued yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can't help falling in love with you it was played at our wedding <laughs> Richard and Carol had lots of fun playing a Zuzu game. They had to answer funny questions. Carol got so excited, she broke out in a steamy sweat. And Carol won the prize! Two tickets to the movie theater. Richard showed his collection of wind instruments. One of the oldest instruments I have is this one. It's a Kahn Wonder Cornet. It was made in 1903. Um, this is a valve trombone that I had for many years. And my flugelhorn that I use all the time. And my trumpet, box thread of various trumpet I use all the time. Flute. Um, I've had this quite a few years now, but I just started playing it lately. I hate watching commercials, so I'll take up my flute and uh, and I wrote down um, songs. I think it's almost 800 songs now I can play by ear. Yoga is just a wonderful exercise. One thing it does is create a lot of flexibility. And it's versatile. It can be done indoors, it can be done outdoors, and it just brings a lot of quiet to your life. You can start your morning with a sun salutation, and that will work out for your whole day to make your day very beautiful. And Casey is joining us. Casey came over here because she heard her friends. And she's going to join in and maybe I'll teach her yoga. I'm involved in a few crafts and the crafts that I've done that are shown here are from a uh, time with my book club. We are a book club, but we also enjoy doing crafts together. So on this, over here on the side is a pumpkin. Now who's ever seen a burgundy velvet pumpkin with pearls? But it's a little quirky, yes, and it also has some jewels on it and a very long stem. However, the stem is real. And on the table, there is a purse organizer. And on the organizer, there is a bracelet that's made of Austrian crystal. I took them to the craft project and made a wired bracelet, and I think it turned out very beautiful, very sparkly, and I like sparkle. In my hands, I have a collage, and the picture in it is of my mother, and uh, the collage is in memory of her. She was a marvelous cook and loved to cook. So uh, this is something that uh, brings me a lot of joy. All of these crafts do, and I enjoy being with the people 
as we uh, make our crafts. Rick and I have been volunteers with the PADS program for many years. In fact, we started in 2010, 2011. Now you're thinking maybe what is PADS? Well, let me tell you. PADS means public action to deliver shelter. We started out serving meals and, and to just a few people and it has grown to over 30,000 meals that we have served. What I'm holding uh, is Rick's hand and my hand. These hands are clasped together. Rick and I do like to hold hands, but this, this what I'm holding, they are clasped together. And this shows, I think, a very solid union that the two of us have together. Love is something that grows in a marriage. You, bec you become comfortable with it and it changes. You can't expect to have the same kind of love at the beginning of your marriage as you do at the end of your marriage. And I just think we need to hold all these things true and remember each other and put each other first. It shouldn't be 50-50. It should be 100% per 100% in a marriage. Do this and I think you will be happy forever. I love to cook, but so today we're going to be cooking, but making, I'm making something simple. But simple doesn't mean that it can't be very nutritious. So we are using some good fruits of the season, and that means bananas, strawberries, blueberries. We're going to be making a smoothie with those, adding some fresh honey for some sweetener. And um, we're gonna blend that all up. As I say, it's easy, but very nutritious. So if you just need a quick pick-me-up, I would suggest this. So here we go. All right, first we're going to add some of the fruit. This is the fruit and the honey. And put the top on. And now we blend. All right, that didn't take long. It's all blended. Now I think just for some little added liquid, this is soy milk, by the way. You could use regular milk, you could use almond milk, but I prefer soy milk. So that's what's going in here today. I have just a little bit of soy milk. And we'll see how this works. We might need to add a little more, but we will see. You know, I think that looks about right. And here it is, very quick and easy pick-me-up, very healthy and something you can give to the kids or to company or just however you prefer to serve it. Mmm, that is so good, it's delicious. Now that it's edible, I think we should have some more. Let's have a whole serving. It is so good, so delicious. 